Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today I'm going to be painting rosy cheeks and I'm going to be sipping on my iced tea. And if you enjoy this process, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, Mars black, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, deep yellow, green oxide, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil and I'm working with three brushes today. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number six round synthetic brush and I have a number two round synthetic brush and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes and down below this video I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and the brushes and all the good stuff in between so that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the first step is we're doing an outline of our body. I'm going to be using my pencil. I'm going to give you a couple of markers and we can just kind of connect those markers and have ourselves the um, outline of what I'm referring to as a female body. <laughs> you can certainly have yours a male body if you'd like to. Whatever gender you would like is totally fine. And your body can certainly be of a different shape than what I'm going to be de depicting. You can have yours larger or smaller or curvier or less curvy. However you'd like to depict it, that's totally fine. But I'm going to sh show you my way and um, or what my person is going to look like and you make that decision all on your own. So I'm going to make some markers on the top left hand corner. I'm going to come in about an inch and a half and make myself a little bit of a marker in through here. I'm going to make another marker right about here. So if this is about halfway left to right in my canvas, I'm coming over maybe about another three inches, making myself a marker right in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the bottom of my canvas and I'm coming in the, the left hand side. Oh, let me move this just like this so you can see this. About two inches, make myself a marker in through here. And then at the bottom right hand corner, I'm coming in about a half of an inch, making myself a marker. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up about halfway up my canvas. On the right hand side, I'm coming in about four inches and making myself a little bit of a marker. And then on the left hand side, I'm coming in about three inches and making myself a little bit of a marker. I'm going to have my body kind of looking like it's leaned a little bit to the side. That's why I have these not perfectly centered. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my markers on the left and on the right. So I want this to look pretty curvy. So I'm going to have this coming in like this in through here. As I come over here, I'm going to hit my middle mark in through here and then I'm going to bump it back out. This is where the rear end is going to go or the silhouette of the rear, the rear end. I'm bringing it a little bit further than my two inch marker so I can bring it back in like this. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to have this kind of sloping down like this and it's going to come to here. And then again, I'm going to just curve it down into my marker at the bottom. So I'm coming almost straight down to start. Get my hand out of the way here. 
and then I'm going to just kind of curve it so it gently curves into this marker in through here and I'm going to continue that curve as it comes down in through here and then I'm bringing it down to meet my little marker down at the bottom. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So you could certainly tweak this all you want. If you want to reshape yours, feel free to do so. That's the beauty of using a pencil. We get to reshape it as much as we want. And then you'll take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the base coat of our skin. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and all I'm using is my rust paint. So I find that rust is a great, or burnt sienna is a great generic color to use as a base coat for skin. So if you're looking to just kind of block in a skin tone, burnt sienna is a great, great color to use. And I'm really just at this point looking to get that um, main area painted in here. I'm not doing any special brush strokes. I'm using a pretty good amount of paint on my brush. If you go outside of your pencil mark like I just did up here, don't worry about it because when we do our base coat for our exterior, we can certainly um, take care of that, modify that as much as we want. I'm just kind of using a generic up and down type of brush stroke, but you could certainly get yours on in whatever brush stroke that you would like. I just recommend whatever brush stroke you do decide to use, just be consistent with that throughout the entire area. So if you decided you wanted to do circles, do circles throughout the whole area. If you wanted to do a stippling or a dotting technique, just make sure that you do that through the whole area. That'll help to unify the, um, the look of the the painting as you go through the painting process with this with that um, base coat underneath there. Because I am using a firm brush and acrylic paint, th this particular color is very translucent. So what's going to happen is you'll see those brush stroke marks, which at this stage of the game is not terribly important because we're gonna be doing all kinds of other things on top of the skin. This is just getting that base coat on for us. And if you wanted to reshape it at all, this is the time to do it. And then once you've got this step all nice and done, we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So you're just gonna wanna wash it and dry it. Make sure you get all these little areas down at the bottom, wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting our background. I'm choosing to do black as my background, but you could certainly use any color that you'd like. It's just meant to represent a wall in the background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm using just black paint. So again, you could really choose to do whatever color that you would like as your background. I'm just gonna make sure that I bring it right up to my, um, my body so there's no gap of unpainted canvas between my person and my background color. And you could, again, use any color that you'd like. If you wanted to, as you are going through this process, you can see I'm not using any, any special paint stroke because black usually covers pretty darn good, but if you were using a lighter color or a color that's more translucent, you may want to do a second coat on this background so once it dries you can just kind of come back with a second coat because I'm having mine as a nice solid color for the background and if you want yours a solid color as well and if you're using a different type of color that might be a little bit more translucent you can certainly just let it dry for a minute come back and do a second coat on it but for me I tend to um, find that black really covers well, so I probably will not need to do a second coat, but if when it dries, I find if I can see any of my little brush marks, I would in fact just go back and make sure that I have um, those covered. And then I'm just gonna kind of tidy up around these edges in through here. And with black, the great thing is, is if you do bump into some of your um, body, 
the black is going to be a nice crisp color so you can it will certainly um, have a nice clean edge to it if you want it to so that's a great thing with the black and then I am going to just finish this area up here I am going to be using the same brush for the next step so once I've got this done I will wash and dry my large brush just make sure I get all the way to the edge like I mentioned I was going to there we go and I'll get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the second layer to our skin. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, rust, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be putting in what I'm gonna to refer to as our contour shadows, which will be the, um, where her spine is, or the arch in, arch in her back, and then her butt crack. <laughs> She's going to have a shadow in her butt crack. And then a little bit over here on the left hand side. And then I'm going to get that those darker areas to blend in with the main area of the skin. So my main area of the skin is going to be made up of this rust color, but I'm also going to make a custom skin color to use as, um, as my building of my skin. So first I'm going to make that custom color. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to use my medium brush or my large brush to paint, but just to mix my color, I'm going to use um, my medium brush. So you can, you can see that how I'll do that. So this, I've already pre-mixed my skin color so you can kind of see where I'm headed. I'm reserving some of my rust because I'm going to be using that as its own throughout the paintings, but I put a little bit of the rust aside so I can show you how I got to here. So what I'm using is I'm using the Burnt Sienna or Rust Yellow, Brown, and White. Those are going to be the four colors that I utilize to create this tan type of skin color. And the skin color can really be whatever tone you would like it to be. I do know that because we're going on top of this rust, it will take on that color as well. So I'm planning for that. I'm making mine a little bit lighter and yellower than I want it to end up because I know that it's gonna be on top of that and it will take on a little bit of that. So that's pretty close to, to this one, maybe a little bit more white in there. Once you've got that color established, I'm just gonna kind of scoop this into here to mix these together. Once you've got that established, you're ready to rock onto this step. So I'm just putting my medium brush away. I'm using my large brush. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna work dark to light. So my darkest areas are gonna be my, my crack area. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what else to call it. The area between the two butt cheeks. Butt crack is what it's gonna be, I guess, for today. <laughs> and then the um, portion in her back. So I'm gonna have it, the center of her back is gonna be a little bit to the left of my left and right. So if this is you know about halfway between the two of them, I'm gonna go a little bit to the left of that. It's gonna kind of come down at a little bit of an arcing motion in through here. And then the crack of her bum is gonna go you know, pretty center between here and here. It's gonna have a little bit of a bend on it. And then I'll have some tan or shadowy ear over here. So I'm starting with mostly brown on my brush with just a tiny bit of black. You don't need a, a lot of black because the black can very easily take over, but it's going to work out well within your um, shadowy areas. So again, halfway between these two is about here. I'm gonna go over to the left a little bit. So as I'm doing these um, kind of contour shadows, I really just want them to fade into the area that they are next to. So I'm gonna kind of get it on here and then just rub it into the area that's next to it. And if you can't get it to kind of just blend into the area that's next to it, pick up a little bit of that rust color and then just work it into that neighboring area. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend, but this is definitely something that will help you get it to look a little bit more realistic if you can get it to blend into that neighboring color. So once I've got that one done, I'm gonna go ahead and do the one for the rear end. So I'm gonna, they would naturally kind of 
go into each other or be lined up with each other. Not necessarily up and down like this, but the natural curve would get them to um, kind of be lined up with each other. So if this goes like this, this would come maybe somewhere in through here. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a curve. Doesn't have to be a major curve where this is going to be hidden by um, a big, huge flower. So you don't have to have it really, um, you know, of a, um, I don't know what else I'm trying to say here. It doesn't, it's going to be hidden. So it doesn't have to be perfect, I guess, is my, my moral to this story. I just picked up a little bit of the rust color so I can get it to blend in with the neighboring, um, with the neighboring color. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just giving the impression of this dip in the body. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a shadowy area over in through here. So this one, I'm going to use more brown than I did the black. And I'm going to get this to really kind of come up in a little bit larger of an area and kind of scoop into the, um, into the side of the body in like this. And just kind of rubbing this in making sure it blends in with that with that rust color and maybe bring a little bit, I think I'm gonna bring a little bit of the shadow down in through here or that darker area. So now that I've got the areas that I feel are gonna be the darkest in the body, now what I can start to do is pick up, I didn't wash my brush, I'm gonna to start to pick up that lighter skin tone that we had and this is going to give me that transition from the light area into the dark area. So I'm gonna utilize that, I'm gonna start up here. My light source I'm thinking is somewhere over on the right hand side. It doesn't have to be all the way to the right, but it's gonna be over here. So I'm gonna have the body lighter over here on the right hand side. So I've got a little bit of that paint on my brush. You don't need a lot. And I'm just gonna kind of start adding it onto here. And as I, as I start to run out of paint, you'll hear and see that I start to use a rubbing type of technique. So that way I'm in essence kind of just getting it to blend in with those colors that are next to it. I will start to use that rust in a second as well because the rust is gonna be my, I'll call it like my connecting color. It's going to be connecting this to here, but with my dirty brush, if I pick up some of that rust, I've got this color plus my rust on my brush right now, and that's going to allow me to get these colors to start to transition from the light to the dark. It's not gonna look awesome at this point. We do have another um, layer that we're gonna be working on on, this, on the skin, so, after you get done with this particular step, don't feel that it's got to look super perfect at this point because, again, this skin to me just has tons and tons of different layers to it. So the more layers that I put onto it, the more natural it's, it begins to look. So I never fear it that it's not going to look good based on these one or you know these first layer or two because I know that in order for it to look nice and natural, it's gotta have a lot of layers, just like the human skin does. So I definitely just consider my um, skin making process to be a layering type of process. So I'm getting this lighter area in through here and I want it to blend in with down here. So I picked up some of this color plus my rust. So that's gonna transition it into a little bit darker area as it's coming down this back side of this area of the skin. So I'm going in through here. And you know, I wish I could say that I was modeling this painting after my own body, <laughs> but I decided that I'm just modeling this after the um, shape that I would like to have. <laughs> so you can certainly model yours after whatever shape that you would like. You can do it after yourself or after somebody that you know, or somebody you would like to, you know, you would your body you would like your body to look like whatever works for you is totally fine i'm just having mine have some nice curve to it and again it's not going to look great at this point the next side over here i am going to be using this color as well but i'll also i'm going to use a, probably a little bit more of the rust and maybe a little bit of the brown in order to get it to look a little bit darker on this side so i picked up the um skin color plus a little bit of brown on my brush 
to start this side over on the left. And because I picked, I think I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more of the brown, because I'm picking up the brown as well, it's gonna give it a little bit darker of a tonal value, which will start to set it a little bit more into a darker area of the body. So, and then I'm just gonna make sure that it kind of blends in with this um, crease that we put in through there. And I'm just gonna kind of keep coming down the body. I'm picking up a little bit of the rust and brown on my dirty brush as I transition into this waist type of area in through here. And I, my trick is I'm not really using a ton of paint on my brush right now, and I'm using this kind of scrubbing type of technique in order to um, do these thin layers that are nice and um, blend, blended in with the neighboring color. And I can still see the color from underneath, which is, which is how these layers begin to build themselves. So for me, this area of the rear end, I'm thinking this is gonna be the lightest area. So that's where I'm gonna focus in on putting the, the lighter paint. And then I'm just gonna kind of get it to blend in with the neighboring skin area. So once I've got this, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of maybe the rust and the brown to get it to blend over here on the darker side, something like this. And I don't know if you can see me or not, but I tend to wipe my brush off a lot on my paper towel as I'm doing this, just so I can control the quantity of paint. If you have a real lot of paint on your brush and you're trying to do this on the fly kind of blending technique that I'm doing or this scrubbing type of technique, if there's too much paint on your brush, you, you can very easily lose control and it can become just one solid color. I'm picking up a little bit of the darker colors to go down here, which is my brown and my rust as it's curving down into the bottom region of her bottom. <laughs> and again, it's not gonna look fully done at this point. You just kind of want to identify this layer of skin as where the lighter areas are going to go, where your darker areas are going to go. And then we are going to be utilizing this same paint brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash. Wait, let me just kind of get this area a little bit more over here. I feel like it doesn't even look like I painted this yet. Um, so you'll just want to wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our skin. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm using the same colors that I did initially. Um, well, I'm not gonna use black this time. So I'm gonna use the skin color that we made, brown, rust. I'm gonna use some white this time too and I might use a little red, red too if I wanna add some extra rosiness to the cheeks. So I'm gonna be using my big brush. Um, I do wanna forewarn you that before you start the step that you want to make sure that this layer is dry. As you're building these kind of layers, it makes it really difficult to go as fast as we're going now. Um, if you don't let the layers kind of dry in between, what can happen is you can end up lifting the paint right off of the canvas because the wetness from the new layer can reactivate that layer underneath and just pull it right off of your canvas. So make sure that you have it dry. Either take that extra long break, find a way to fan it with whatever method that you have, or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer and get it, get it dry that way. It will make your life a whole lot easier. So this is again just going to be another layer of the skin. I'm gonna add my brightest areas. Um, so even though we've already kind of designated where the lightness is, I'm gonna elevate that maybe a little bit more in a more concentrated area and then just make sure it all blends in together. The skin has so many different layers to it. Again, you could add many more layers to just keep enhancing it and smoothing it out if you wanted to. Um, but we're going just for a nice, fun, interpretive type of painting. So we're not gonna get it too perfect. And I do know that this whole area in through here is gonna be occupied by a big, huge rose. So I'm not terribly concerned if that area is perfect. I do want the edges to you know, have some nice life to them. So I'm gonna have this area on the right-hand side again is gonna be the lightest, and then over here is gonna be a little bit darker. 
So I'm just going to kind of start with my, um, I think I'm going to start with my lightest areas and just kind of fade them out into, into the darkness. So I'm starting back with that same um, original color that we used for the skin, so that tan color. And I'm just adding another layer onto here. Only this time, I'm really gonna make sure that I've got it well blended. So I'm picking up some of the rust right now and making sure that I've got it blended right into the neighboring areas. I'll probably hit this with a little bit more um, brown as well in that little um, crevice of her of her rear end into there, but I want to just kind of make sure that I've got this all nice and attached to the color next to it. So again, I'm just kind of, I'm using this round scrubbing type of technique, but again, you could find whatever style brush stroke works best for you. As I get towards the, um, the edge over on this right hand side. I do want it to look like there's some shape, so I don't need to bring this lightness all the way to the edge, but I do need it to connect to that edge. So I did pick up some of this color, and then I'm, I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and rust as well, just to get it to look like it's um, going around the body in through here, just making sure I've got some kind of transition from the light to the dark. So I'm just adding that bit of darkness over on the edge and making sure that it all makes sense. I think I want a little bit more volume. So wherever you want it to bump out a little bit more, that's where you're gonna add that lightness into it. So I felt like it looked a little flat in through here. So I'm just adding a bit more of that lightness to go on to there. And if your paint doesn't move as um, fluid-like as mine does, you can always add a touch of either water or a liquid medium to your paint. I'm using a thin bodied student grade paint. So mine tends to stay fluid a little bit longer than a heavy bodied paint, but you can certainly adjust yours as you see fit. So I just wanna make sure that I've got all the way to the edges, that I've got a nice blend going on in through here. I'm gonna bring this up in through here. I think in a minute, I'm gonna add a little bit of pinkness to her, to her bum but I just wanna make sure that I've got everything kind of blended in nice and well before I hit that final, that final brightness. I'm gonna just make sure that I've got up here accounted for. So this, I'm gonna have her, like a highlight kind of going right into her um, rear end or the side of her body in through here. So I'm just making sure that I represent that lightness in through here and I'm just gonna get it to fade out into the neighboring colors. So again, I'm just kind of doing a second or another layer to the skin, making sure that all these colors connect. All right now I'm picking up my rust and my brown to make sure that it connects in through here without washing my brush. That will connect the uh, lighter color that I had on my brush into this darker, um, a little area that we had down the center of her back. You can even overlap the color a little bit just to make sure it really connects well to each other. I want to make sure that I've got this area nice and fully rendered as well. And if you're still seeing some of the under color that's not speaking to you well enough, then just you can always do another layer. Just get this layer on here, let it dry, let it see you know what it visually does for you. If it if it turns into the right color, if it's got the right shape on it that you are desiring. It's, it's always a, a work in progress when it comes to skin because you can get away with so many different layers on it in order to make it look nice and real. So that's looking pretty good to me. I just wanna make sure I transition over into here nice and well. I picked up a little bit of my brown and my rust just to make sure that this isn't just a straight line between her, between her cheeks. <laughs> so I'm just making sure these colors connect well, and then I'm gonna come on over to this left-hand side. And again, once I get this all on here, I think I'm gonna add a bit of rosiness to her, her, the tops of her cheeks as well, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So this side, again, I want this side a little bit darker, so I'm gonna, I think, work my way from the dark to the light. So I just picked up some brown and rust, and this is very similar to the first, the first layer, or the first, the second 
um, layer of skin that we put on where we're kind of identifying those light areas and the dark areas. We're, we're adding the form to the body. This is adding the shape. So everywhere where I want it to, again, come out a little bit more, that's where I'm going to have it lighter. Everywhere where I want it to look like it's receding or going away from the viewer, that's where I'm going to have it look a little bit darker. So I would you know, get these colors on here, let them dry a minute, step away from it and say, okay, does that butt cheek come out far enough to me or is it looking too flat? What do I want it to do? And if you want it to look rounder and more voluptuous and to come out more to the viewer, then you're gonna wanna add more lightness to it to get it to pop out a little bit more. So I'm just kind of working on this one, but I do want this one to be a little bit darker than that one because I want that one to look like it's more in the light. So I'm adding a little bit more of the brown and the rust to this one over on this side. And then when I go to add the rosiness, which I'll do in a minute, uh, I'll make the one on the right kind of stand out a little bit more. And then you could always put you know, bring the cheeks up higher. You could bring the lightness up a little bit higher. Again, there are no two bodies exactly alike in this world, so you can certainly modify yours whatever way you want. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm transitioning up into this back region and that I don't need to work on that any further. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got my third layer of skin on this area up and through here, making sure that it transitions nicely into that center area of the back and of course, the center of the back doesn't necessarily have to be as dark as her, um, as her crack. <laughs> it's so funny painting these things on, on camera where I get to say butt crack the whole time. <laughs> so anyways, so when I'm giggling inside my hand, it's like the, you know, the 12 year old little girl in me that's just cracking up that I get to talk about a butt crack while I'm painting. But it's a beautiful, you know, it's a beautiful sentiment. And it, you know, lots of people like to paint the figure. And this is a great lesson to learn how to do these skin tones. I made this just a little bit darker up and through here. Now, I think I wanna add a little bit of peachiness or pinkness to this cheek over here. So I didn't wash my brush. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of red and white and make myself a little bit of a pink kind of color. You could even add this to your original skin tone. So something that just adds that little more of a pinky hue to it, that's gonna make it look really nice and natural. And again, you can utilize your own skin tone. You can, you know, have fun with this. Make it into whatever you would like it to be. And again, I know that this is gonna get a little bit darker as it dries, so I'm not, I'm not too fearful of it being really light as I start out here. And then I'm gonna pick up some of that, um, the skin color, our original skin color, just to make sure that it blends in nicely. And you could, again, add a little bit of water to your brush. You could add a little bit of liquid medium to make sure that it all kind of blends in nicely for you. Whatever works for your you know, for your personal technique, that's the way that, that you should go, you know, and just kind of keep up for me. I just kind of keep rubbing it until it feels like it is as blended into the neighboring areas as I want it to be. And then I would definitely, for my own purposes, let this dry, see, you know, see if those values are where I want them to be. And if I needed to adjust them at all, I certainly would. I think I'm gonna put a tiny bit of this pink right up top here too, just to connect these two pieces. So I just added a little bit of that uh, light pinky tone to my brush to get it to uh, again, connect these colors in through here. And then again, I'm, I would just keep fiddling with it. We are going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got your body in shape here and you've got all of your skin tones talking to one another and you've created the shape that you want, you can um, put this large brush away wherever you like to. Take out your... <laughs> It's really hard to stop skin, just for the record. <laughs> but especially since I know that there's so many layers on, on, the, on the realistic skin. So it's really hard for me to stop. But when you can stop, we are going to be utilizing um, our medium brush for the next step. So you can just get ready. 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our flower, the rose part, the red part. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush, I'm gonna be using just red paint. So we're really just gonna be going for an exterior shape of the flower right now. Um, and then we'll put all of our details on it later, but I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna just build the, the shape of it. So I want my flower to be kind of right in the middle of the crook of her back. You could certainly put yours anywhere you want. So I'm gonna give you the height of my flower with a couple of markers and the farthest out width of the flower. So if, uh, if this is about halfway in the middle of your canvas, I'm a little to the left of that and I'm about a third of the way down my canvas. And so that's about as tall as I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a marker. And then I'm coming directly down from that to just past where her cheeks, the top of her cheeks are. So, and I'm a little bit to the right. So that's about as low as I'm gonna go with mine. So I still have maybe a little bit more than a third of the way down my canvas here. And then left to right, I've got my, my flower is gonna be a little tipped. So I've got my left to right, the widest parts about here and here. So if you were to kind of cut your body in three, it, this is a little bit shorter than this and these might almost be kind of equal. And that's, you know, not the perfect measurements in the world, but that'll give you a good balance throughout the painting. And then what I'm gonna do, for me, every time I do a rose, I think that that center part is always like this kind of bulb with kind of a flat spot at the top. So I'm gonna take this as my top center spot and I'm gonna give myself a little wavy line to start this out, something like that. And then I'm gonna take these two areas and I'm gonna bring them down like this and meet the my bottom marker somewhere in through here and this again is just kind of giving me an exterior shape for my flower and how i i'm building mine you can certainly build yours a little bit different than mine if you'd like to and i'm going to take this and shape it out like this and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take these are going to be my farthest out edges so i'm going to take from up here i'm going to give myself a little bit of a petal that's gonna come out in through here, and then I'm just gonna kind of drop it down and hit this marker in through here, and then just bring this in like that. And then over here on the left side, this one's gonna have a little bit more fun to it. So I'm gonna take it from this top part over here, I'll give it a little bit of a bump in through there, bring it down here. Maybe we'll have another petal sticking out in this vicinity like this, come down and hit my marker in through here. And then maybe I'll have a little ripple of a petal coming down in through here. And then I'm just gonna color the whole thing in. I don't even care at this point what that middle structure was because that just helped me create the exterior structure. So for me, when I'm um, creating a, a, sh a distinct shape of something. I like to try and identify that main shape that makes up that object and start from there and then just build the exterior um, markings from that. It just makes my brain work easier that way. You might find that you have a better way of um, seeing things, but in my observation, that's, that's how I can create the relationship between um, the sections of a particular object, it helps me to be able to see that, that main shape and then just build the areas around it. And I'm not doing anything special with my paint stroke. I'm just getting a nice um, solid base of red paint on here. You, I, again, I'm using a thin body paint, so mine is gonna see that color behind it. So I'm not concerned if it looks streaky or anything after this step because we've got lots of work to go on it. And then I'm gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your base of your flower on here, you can wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer for our flower stem and leaves. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using green and brown paint. 
So how I'm going to do this is I am going to first put my stem on and then some big leaves at the bottom of the rear end and then the bottom of the flower as well. So I'm just going to pick up green and brown paint on my brush. To know where I'm putting mine, you can of course put yours a little bit different, but I'm starting my stem a little bit to the right of the bottom of my flower, so somewhere in through here. And I've got it going down right about to here. And I'm gonna have it at a little bit of a curve. I want it pretty wide, so maybe about a half of an inch wide at the top. It does not have to follow the butt crack because this is like meant to be like it's behind or just laying on her. So you can certainly put yours at whatever angle you want. Um, you know, that's going to be your judgment call <laughs> where you want the flowers um, stem to go, but I'm not putting it directly inside the crack. <laughs> I'm just putting it near the crack. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some, um, some leaves coming out. So I've got the, I'm going to have a couple in the middle here and then a couple on the end. So I'm putting my farthest one out over in through here. So I'm bringing this right about to here and then I'm just going to kind of bring it down into the bottom of my canvas like that and I've got mine as representational kind of leaves similar to how I see them on a rose with that they're kind of big and they've got the pointy tips to them they also have little ripples around the edges too but I'm just going for a nice um, a nice generic representation of them. I think I'm going to have this one coming maybe somewhere in through here. And again, yours can be totally different than mine. I'm using green and brown on my brush right now to give a nice base coat to them. We'll be doing the highlights and shadows and all kinds of detail on them in a little bit, but this'll just, this'll just get us started with the, with the basic shape and a nice base coat to work from. And because I'm using the colors at the same time on my brush, that's going to allow for um, some good to tonal value changes within the um, within the leaf itself. So it's not just one flat color. And I'm doing my other one over in through here. This one's going to come maybe somewhere down in through here. And I'm just painting them in with a base coat. So again, no special brush strokes to start here, just kind of getting that color on. I'm going to have one that's going to overlap my stem a bit. So maybe this one comes in through here and then crosses over and comes down like this. But again, have yours go whichever direction you want. They can be strategically placed to hide stuff if you wanted them to be more of a um, disguising factor along the whole rear end. You could put them all along. You could really have some fun with, with using them to your advantage as you're doing the painting. I'm going to go ahead and do some right at the bottom of here. So these ones I'm going to have maybe they're going to be smaller. So this one I think I'm going to have come in, I would say maybe up and through here. They're going to be a little bit more narrow. They're going to come down to the bottom of the, the, um, the base of the flower, something like this. I'll have a couple come in. Maybe this one will come down in through here. And again, yours don't have to be exactly shaped as mine. This is just giving me a nice balance with all the different stuff that's happening on the painting. So feel free to make yours into whatever way that you would like. I'm going to just kind of get this one on in through here. This one's going to be leaning over towards the viewer. And then I'm going to have maybe one more over here on the side, maybe just popping up like that. I just felt my hand stick to the canvas. That's a sure sign that I've got wet paint on my hands somewhere and then just bringing this up in through here. And then we're going to utilize our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the shadows between our petals on our flower head. I'm going to be using my small brush the colors that I'm going to be using are red and black. You might choose to use a little brown too as you go through this process, but my dominant colors are definitely definitely going to be red and black. So as I'm doing this, my thought process is 
I'm going to have some of my petals that that curl over. So I'm going to have a shadow underneath that little lip that curls over as well as inside that petal going inside the flower. So I'm doing this step first to, in essence, kind of give myself an outline of sorts of where each petal is going to go. And you can certainly construct yours differently than mine, but this is, this is how it works well for my brain. So I'm going to start with red and black on my brush at the same time. This is going to create a really nice dark red kind of color. And for me, I'm going to kind of start at the bottom of the flower and work my way up. So I know that I have this petal that I have sticking out in through here. So I'm going to have this one kind of be one of my bigger main petals of sorts. So I'm going to kind of just come in like this. And this one's going to be that, you know, the iconic kind of one that you see that that wraps down the front of that flower. So I know that the line that I just drew, I want it to kind of blend in with that neighboring red on one side. For me, it's gonna be on the right side. So I'm just picking up a little bit of red paint so I can get this line to blend in so it's not just a firm line going on. So that's gonna be where it curl, where it um, comes lifts away from the main flower I'm going to give it its petal that flips over is going to come right in through here so I'm going to take my red and black and I'm going to bring this in through here and then just bring this down and meet this edge in through here and then I'm going to get this section to blend in with that dark area so I just picked up a little bit of red and I'm going to get this to blend in in through here so I just created one petal that's coming out this flips out this is the underside of it and this is the inside where it meets the main flower so then i'm going to go ahead and repeat that so i want another one of them coming out on this side over here so i've got the top edge in through here and this one's going to come down in through here and maybe curve down like that i'm going to pick up some red paint to get it to blend in with the inside of the flower like this and I'm just kind of blending it on in there so it's not a firm line and then once I've got that blended in then I'm going to give it the edge that flips over which is right in through here so I'm going to pick up a little bit of red and black and I'm going to give it that inside or the part that where it's flipping over so I'm going to go ahead and do that in through here for me, I know that there's gonna be a little bit of darkness down at the bottom of my flower as well. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of a shadow down at the bottom. So I'm just using that red and black on my brush to give myself a little bit of a shadow down at the bottom of the flower as well. I'm gonna go ahead and move on, move on up here. So I want another one of these kind of petals coming out in through here. So I'm gonna have this one is going to be Kind of meeting right up in this corner in through here i'm going to have it coming over dipping over in through here and then it's going to come down and i guess meet in through here so this is going to be shadowed on the inside of the flower so the inside of the flower is above that particular petal that i just created so i'm just kind of getting that to blend to the inside of the flower like that and then i want my edge of that particular petal so you could draw this out with pencil or with chalk or with whatever drawing medium works for you um, but or you can just kind of build it as you go you can just watch mine and just do one one little petal at a time and I'm just kind of getting this. This is the underside of this edge that's flipping out in through here. So I'm just getting that to blend into the red. So it's a, it's a slow blending kind of process to get these, uh, to get each area to have its own kind of identity. You, you know, it, you could certainly just go and do a nice solid color and just add little, a couple of little highlights here and shadows there. But if you wanted to really kind of pop out and be three dimensional, it helps you to be able to identify each one of these sections. 
So I still kind of want to maintain that center shape of the flower and I can see it's already started to establish itself in through here. So I'm going to use that to my advantage right now and give myself another edge to a petal coming in through here. So I think I'm going to start this one up in through here. I'm going to, where is it going to go? Maybe right to about here. So I'm going to just kind of get this one to maybe go in like that get it to blend in with this area above. I'm gonna do the underside of it. And again, I just keep picking up red and black. This is gonna be the underside of it. So something like this, maybe get this to wiggle up and through here. That's a lot of black on my brush. So I just wiped it off on my paper towel, picked up a little bit more red so I didn't lose control. And then I'm just gonna kind of get this to blend in and through here. And again, if you know, if you find yourself, like I just am finding myself that I have too much black on my brush, so I just rinsed it off and I'm picking up more red just so I don't, um, you know, get, get carried away and turn the whole flower black, which could easily happen. So I'm just kind of making sure that I keep myself in control as I do this. And if you have other areas that you want to work out along the way, go for it. And then I'm just going to give myself a couple more. Um, I think I want this to have an edge over in through here. So this one I think I'm gonna have somewhere in through here. It's very easy to get lost in the petals. <laughs> so if you, you know, just go one at a time. So you don't have to over overdo it, just kind of do one at a time, kind of get them to separate. As I'm going in towards this interior, they're, you know, they're closer together. You're not gonna necessarily see each one fully individual like we are on these exterior ones that are really large. So as you move towards that center, if you find yourself just kind of making little marks here and there, that's okay too. So I have this one coming here. I think I want another one that's gonna come over in through here. So again, I've got the red and black. I'm using a bit more red on my brush right now because I don't want that black to um, take over too much, but I do want there to be some sort of um, ability to see it so I'm being cautious with it at this point is kind of the moral to my story <laughs> and then maybe I'll just have a couple more in through here so again as I go towards this inside the inside is more of a circular kind of look to it so as I go more towards this inside I'm really just a little bit more carefree with um, with the edges of those of those leaves or the petals but I don't need it to be um, really a hundred percent every single petal as I get up and through here. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your petals in, in place and you're comfortable with it, you can just wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the flower part. I'm gonna be using my small brush. This in essence is gonna be your highlights and just doing any little tweaks to make sure that all the colors talk together. So I'm using my small brush. I'm primarily gonna be using red and white, but I may also use a little yellow as well. And the reason I say that is because when using red and white as your highlight color, you're naturally gonna end up with potentially a lot of pink. And if you want to counteract that pink, you can use a little bit of yellow, which will make it look like a lighter red as opposed to just a pink, which I guess pink when it's light, or red when it's light, it does turn into a pinkish kind of color, but it'll be a visual preference on your part. But if you want it to be like a richer, um, kind of deeper color, the yellow will help to achieve that. So we've already designated where our shadowy areas are. Our highlight areas are gonna be on the part of the petals that pop out the most to us. So I'm gonna put a little bit of red and white on my brush at the same time. I'm not gonna use a lot of paint during this step. Um, so that way it kind of dries on the fly and I can, I can keep adding layers as I see fit. So I'm gonna start in through here and just kind of get this, um, lighter color on there. I just wiped my brush off and picked up a little bit of red to get it to blend in with the edge of that particular petal. So I don't necessarily have to have the entire edge all 
a bright, bright white kind of color. The idea here is if you want it to have form or to have shape to it, you want to have just a portion of it, which is the area that's closest to the viewer, that's the area that you want to be the lightest and brightest. So like on this particular petal that I'm working on, I would have this area the lightest and brightest, and then I would just kind of fade it into the darkness as it gets farther away from the viewer. So you can have it as a building process. It can be something that, you know, you start with it being brighter with that white and then if it's too bright you can add a little bit of that red on top of it of course i made that one just too dark for me so i'm going to add a little bit of the white back to it but the the guidance i'm trying to give you is that the whole petal does not have to be super bright you just want the part that is again closest to the viewer to have the brightest look to it so i add my little highlight I picked up a little bit of red to get that highlight to blend in with the neighboring area on that particular petal. When it comes to these interior parts, you may not even need to do anything to them. If, you, if they're too dark for you, you can certainly add a little bit more of the red on top of them. That'll make that red more vibrant, but you may not need to do anything to those um, interior areas at all. So again, just red and white is what I'm um, working with for these little highlights on these petals that are popping out to us. So these are going to be the petals that are curled out and kind of facing the viewer the most or the closest to the viewer. And the little edges that you've got kind of rippling out over the side, something like that. I'm going to pick up a touch more red just to get this to blend in a little bit. And again, I'm not going for 100% white. I'm not going for a perfect gradient. I'm really just going for, let's give some of these edges that are popping out towards the viewer a bit more information and vibrancy so they appear to be closer to the viewer and they've got that, that um, nice brightness to them. So my light source is over here on the right. So I've got these ones that are facing over here with the little highlight. As I get towards the interior of the flower, if I want this flower to look like it's tipped a little bit, I can have my brighter areas over here as if they're catching the light from over here. And then inside here could potentially be a little bit darker. So I have some white on my brush right now and I'm gonna catch the edge of a couple of these petals over on this side. And I'm gonna make them really nice and vibrant to steer the viewer to understand that the light is coming from over there. And then I'll get that vibrancy to blend in with the neighboring colors. So just kind of giving this a little quick blend in through here without overdoing it because I just really want the, um, the highlight to be there but not to, oh, you know, to make sure that it blends in with the neighboring areas. I'm making sure that I've got all of these little edges of the, the petals to make sure that we can see them, maybe a little bit more over in through here just to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And then I would just kind of keep keep tweaking. Maybe I want this area a little bit lighter. I actually didn't even use the yellow. Um, sometimes as I'm going through this process, it's like, ooh, that turned too pink on me. And I and I resort to the yellow, but I'm I'm feeling like this is working out just fine for me. So I'm not even I'm not even gonna touch that yellow right now. My red and my white are working out just fine. And then I would just kind of keep playing with this until I felt like I've got everything as bright as I wanted and it's all talking really nice and, and showing the beautiful colors of this, of this flower. And then I am going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once I've got my beautiful petals, all nice and illuminated as much as I want them to. I will wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our stem and our leaves. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do my shadowy areas and my 
veins of sorts in, in the leaves themselves first, and then I'll do my highlights. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm loading it with brown and black to start. I'm working on my stem first. I'm gonna make this pretty darn dark right up in the um, underside of it where it is underneath these leaves in through here. And then on the left hand side, I'm making it really dark because to me the light source is kind of up and to the right. So I'm putting my shadow on the left side of that stem, picking up just a tiny bit of green paint just to get it to blend in a little bit, make sure that it is in fact blended as much as I want it to be. And then I'm just gonna move right on to my leaves down below. I'm gonna put the um, veins in them with brown and black on my brush. I'm gonna just move my canvas right here so you can see what I'm doing here. And really I'm just using kind of a real light sketcherly type of brush stroke, just kind of doing a vein down the center and then just bringing out some little marks in um, in a light kind of way. I'm not, I'm not doing much other than giving a little bit of depth and information into the center of that leaf. So again, just kind of bringing up a directional kind of um, line up the middle and then just lightly giving myself a few different, a few kind of veins coming through the center of it. And I'm doing that on all of them. So black and brown are the two colors that I have on my brush at the same time. Just giving myself, again, just a little bit of information in through there. And then up in these leaves up here, I don't necessarily want those to be as dark as the ones down below, but I do want them to have a little bit of information in them as far as um, shadowy kind of areas. So I'm definitely going to put a little bit down that center, but not not a lot, maybe wherever I want that leaf to kind of dip in. Like I feel like this would dip in a little bit in through here. Maybe also just giving the information of what direction that leaf is coming out at us. So maybe just giving the viewer the information that it's got a little bit of a wave to it or something. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna start adding some highlights in through here. So again, I'm not going on it for a ton of detail here, but I do want there to be some highlights. So I'm going green, yellow, and white on my brush at the same time. And you can certainly alter the intensity of, of this particular kind of highlight. So I'm just kind of adding a bit towards the top of these leaves. I will, um, I will get it to blend in a little bit more in a second here, just kind of using a real nice loose sketcherly kind of brush stroke to get uh, some little highlights in through these, um, in through these leaves in through here, get in a little bit more in through here. I'm going to add some more green to my brush just to get this to um, look like it belongs together. I don't want my highlights to be too terribly disconnected from the um, from the leaf itself. I don't want these leaves to become the focal point of the painting. The rose and the big bum, I guess, are the, are the focal point. Um, I don't want, the leaves are just kind of a nice accent that I've added onto here just to, um, you know, to use complementary colors and to make that rose come a little bit more to life with, with its own foliage attached. So I'm really making a concerted effort to not make these um, leaves too, too dramatic and have too much boldness to them. So I'm right now I'm utilizing my green as well as maybe I'll use a little bit of brown too. You could even use a little bit of rust if you wanted to have a little bit more earthiness or harmony within your colors for, throughout, throughout the whole painting. I'm adding rust to my brush right now to show you how that would, that would appear. So adding complementary colors into the various objects within your painting brings all of your colors together and adds a sense of harmony throughout the painting. So if you ever feel like your painting from one piece to the other seems to be a bit disconnected, just start incorporating 
similar colors from one object to the next and that's going to bring them all together so it is um, one of those things sometimes it's hard when you when you've got different objects in your painting that really do call for different colors if you want them to look realistic but you run the risk of making that painting look like areas just don't dis that don't connect with one another and they don't belong in the same painting so in order to accomplish that sometimes you can just carry that color from one area to the next um, and or just add a hint of it into another area and that will bring those those um, it'll give you some harmony throughout the painting I'm going to add some up and through here as well so green yellow and white giving myself uh, remembering my light sources over to the right I can add maybe a little bit on the right side of this leaf in through here maybe a little bit on this tip maybe some coming off the edge of here maybe a little here a little here a little there <laughs> you just have fun with it that's that's the whole point here a little bit over on this edge in through here and then I'll bring them all together maybe with a little bit of my green and yellow just to get them all to talk to one another and you know this is a great area where you could have a little shadow in between these leaves make them look a little bit more natural but if you want them to take on the light from the right just you know in your head use your your see if you can tap into that logical side and say okay what piece of this leaf would be you know ca catching the most part of that of that light and you can cer certainly dictate it from there and then we are going to be using the same small brush for the next step so once you've got your beautiful leaves and your stem all nice and finished you can wash and dry this small brush and you, you see I can you can just kind of keep tweaking as you want wash and dry this brush and just get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we're painting a shadow of this flower onto the body. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using predominantly watered down black paint, but depending on the skin color that you've chosen to do, you might opt or want to use brown because brown's gonna be see-through and if it's a darker color than what you've, um, than your skin, then it could also work as your shadow application color. So a shadow is just intended to look like whatever the surface it's on, only darker. And the closer the shadow is to the object, the darker that shadow will be. So for me, I could probably get away with using just black paint really close to my flower. But as the as the shadow dissipates away from the flower itself, I might want it to be a little bit more translucent and pick up some of those underneath colors. So how I'm gonna do this is I will be using my small brush. I'm gonna be dropping in a couple of drops of water to make it really see like translucent and very almost watery. In, in a sense, you could again use a little bit of brown if you wanted to, just if you're afraid of the full on black itself, but you definitely want it to be nice and fluid so you can control its um, translucency. And then, I don't know if you can see it in through here. Yeah, there we go. So you can see how mine is nice and see-through. So that way I can dictate how, I can keep adding layers to make it darker, but to, make sure that it is transparent i want to make i want to have it very fluid so once i've got it nice and fluid and i'm comfortable with its fluidity fluidity <laughs> i will start laying out my idea of where i want my shadow to go so my light source is up to the right so my shadows are going to be to the left and you know just to the left of the flower so the flower to me is resting on or very close to the body so i'm going to have that shadow touching the flower in through here but when it gets to the stem i want the stem to look like it's lifted off or a little bit away from the body a bit so i will put the stem a little bit farther away from the um the shadow of the stem a little bit farther away from that so i'm going to start in a couple of easier areas we'll do these leaves down below and then we'll just work our way up so if my 
it also so my shot or my highlight is my light source is over to the right um but it all would all depend on how much each of these kind of pops out so your shadow can be skewed depending on what um, direction that leaf is turned in so you can kind of use your imagination to see to tell the viewer if this is up away from the body or right next to it so i'm going to just kind of take this particular one and i'm going to make this shadow look like it's right on the on the body which means that the this particular leaf would be a little bit away from the body i guess a little bit and then the next one here, I want this little tip to look like it's off the body a little bit. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put the shadow a little bit away from that tip. So that's going to tell the viewer that the tip of the um, leaf is a little bit away from the body. And then I'm going to connect this just down in through here, putting um, carrying the exterior shape of that particular leaf, just making sure I've got that shadow coming down deep in between those little leaves. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to this next one right here. So this one, again, I'm going to have it looking like it's away from the body a little bit. So I'm going to take my shadow and follow the, the shape of that particular object, but I'm a little bit away from the object. So that, again, is going to tell the viewer that the object is not touching that skin. It's a little bit farther away. I'm going to do the same thing for this one over here. I'm going to bring this shadow a little bit to the left, maybe a little bit down, something like this. And then I'm just going to sh follow the um, profile of what that particular leaf looks like. So this is going to, again, just tell the viewer that this object is not touching the skin. So just bringing this all the way up to the edge. And for the shadow, you want to kind of make sure that that color within the shadow is uh, doesn't necessarily look too streaky, just look, you want it to look like a nice blend um, in through there. So then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move up here and I'm gonna do my shadow of the stem. So I'm gonna have this coming probably, I guess, up in through here and I needed to take on the same curve as that stem or a similar one and it's gonna just kind of ride along the edge of this leaf I guess something like this and then just bring this down back in through here and then just color it in like this my paint is still nice and translucent which is working out well for me and then I've got these couple in through here so this one I'm gonna have I'm gonna say these ones are kind of far away so we're gonna go down like this something like this and then just carry this same shape like this and again because I'm bringing these shadows away from the object that is casting the shadow it's going to tell the viewer that it is sticking out from the body or it's not um, laying directly on the body so this one i think i'm going to put here because i i want to tell the viewer that the light source is up a little bit so i'm going to take this one in through here maybe this one gets a little skewed a little bit further out the side something like this and again you can shadows can get skewed maybe the butt popping out is making this shadow longer it's because the distance of you know the the curve of the body is carrying this shadow a little bit further. So that would definitely, the possibility of that happening would, you know, is very likely. So you can certainly play with the, the length of the shadows to tell the shape of the form that they're sitting on. And then I have these two in through here. So this one, I think I'm gonna have it casts its shadow on here, and then it's gonna cast a little bit of a shadow on this cheek back in through here so maybe this is just over like this coloring that in like that and then this one up here i think i want this one to come away from the body up in through here and then maybe come down touching the the leaf right in through here and then i think this one's going to cross over onto this side 
So again, I'm just, I'm having fun with telling the viewer how much these leaves are popping out from the body. This shadow is bringing them to life. It's making them three-dimensional. They looked cool before, but now they look three-dimensional, which is excellent. And if you need any little shadows in between these, feel free, now's the time to, to get them in there. And then I just have my shadow over here on the left-hand side of my flower. So for me, I think, again, I want my light source up here. Perhaps this little edge is making a little tiny shadow right in through here. So you can, you know, again, tell that viewer how, how much this is popping out. Maybe this edge is casting a little bit of a shadow over in through here. So I'm just gonna color this area in over here with that darkness. And then I've got the shadow from this side of the, of the flower. It's gonna be a big shadow. I just wanna kind of put my head back and plan this out a little bit before I, before I take, take flight here. So this corner I think I'm gonna put out in through here. So I think that'll work and then I'll finish it coming down in through here. Okay, so and sometimes you just have to plan it out before you, before you um, execute it. So I'm gonna have the profile of this one, I think right in through here. So we're gonna go like this. And again, I, I, I don't wanna have um, to, it look like I'm outlining the whole thing. So you may find that as I go about doing this, I tend to color in the sections as I go because I, I don't want it, me to just do an outline with my black paint and then that black paint be darker than what's on the inside. I really want it to look like it um, is a fluid type of shadow. So it has um, the same see-throughness or transition of the see-throughness throughout the whole thing so it doesn't look um, too um, blocky, I guess. And then I'm just gonna bring this down in through here, making this the kind of silhouette shadow type of appearance from here. Bring this down in through here and then just get this to be colored in. And then if you wanted to, and if you felt it was necessary, before you finish this step, you could go through with solid black paint and get it to be a, a real dark shadow right as it meets the object. So if you you know are going about this and you feel like you're done and you're like, oh, my shadow just looks too light or it doesn't look shadowy enough, you could always bring a touch of just black paint and really give it a crisp outline where it's meeting that particular object. But that would be a visual kind of preference to you. And then we are going to be using this same small brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadows done, you can, I might, I might pull this one out just a little bit more. Once you've got your shadows done, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna sign mine with my small brush. I'm going bottom left and I'm going red paint today. So I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like to be your identifying mark is totally fine. It's your painting, you sign it however you would like to. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed your, the process. I hope you painted yourself a very beautiful butt and rose. <laughs> and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.